If you know how to do the mantra chanting with the right technique, then that would be enough to quieten your mind. If you do not know the correct technique, then you may do no, thousands and thousands, thousands of mantra chanting and yet the mind would be racing and thinking about all the worldly important or unimportant stuff. So the technique is very important too. For pranayama again the right technique is required. So for that it is very very important to understand what a yogic breathing is. Until you know what a yogic breathing is, you cannot do the pranayam properly. So you have to understand what is the difference in between abdominal breathing, chestal breathing and clavicular breathing. All three are very different. So you have to know about what is a balanced breathing and what is the right posture to do that. And what should be the condition of your digestive system if you wish to do the pranayam also. For example, if you haven't had a good bowel movement in the morning and you wish to do pranayam, oh, no, no way, it won't be of any benefit. Rather, it can be little troublesome. So one has to have a you know, a good bowel movement in the morning. So if you are constipated or if you have ulcers or if you have uh, gastritis or if you have pancreatitis, if you have flatulence, if you have bloating, you are not ready for doing the pranayama. So the physical aspect has to be considered very nicely. And, and to uh, remove all these physical ailments or challenges, one has to correct their food habits and sleeping patterns and performing right asanas. So you can't say that 23 hours I'm going to be a totally unsystematic and absolutely inert about what I am doing or thinking too much, eating wrong foods, not sleeping well, not waking up early in the morning, and eating all the junk, right? I was just reading these papers, you know, that uh, most of the companies which are uh, packing uh, so-called health food, they are frying that food in seed oils. Seed oils mean even the rice bran and even the cotton seed. Cotton seed, that's not meant for human consumption. But they will use the hexagon chemical and take out uh, oil from those seeds. And this hexane is carcinogenic. Will grow cancer and tumors. So you but a healthy food, packed healthy food. It can be chocolates, it can be namkeen, it can be fried peanut or cashew nut. And it's saying it's very healthy or the rice krispies and they say it's very healthy. Please read the ingredients. If it is fried in a palm oil, rice bran oil, cotton seed oil, even soya bean oil. Wherever processing has happened, chemicals have been added into it. And if you keep on eating that, you will get sick. Alarming number of cancers in our society are happening because of this seed oils. So people are in such a rush to eat the um, pin, eat that peanuts. Oh, it's so healthy because it is saying it is healthy, and they say it's it's um, fried in a healthy soya bean oil or healthy rice bran oil or healthy cotton seed oil. Now they won't put which seed; they would just put the word healthy, healthy, 
and oh, it's good. Please go back where they have listed the ingredients. Thank God they are supposed to put it on the paper. And whatever oil is mentioned, just Google it, what it will do to you. And then you tell me whether it is healthy or not. See, I am also fond of peanuts and cashews. But I am going to roast it myself. Sometimes uh, there are two, three people who I can say, okay, I need, these are the peanuts. Now, the peanuts, whether they were organic or not, if it is a GMO peanut, I am not going to eat that. But you are never going to check whether it is a GMO food or not. This uh, foreign brands which are inflating in our Indian uh, markets. People go gaga over, oh, coming from America, coming from Europe, coming from... All is good as long as it is organic. And I was talking to uh, a very high official of FDA USA. And this uh, woman is an Indian woman. And she was saying that the definition of organic is very shady. So if 98% of the stuff in that food product were non-organic, but something which was just maybe 1% or 2% which was organic, it can be labeled as organic. <laughs> right? I'll, I'll give you one example. One time I was in USA, so the, the family wanted to go for uh, grocery shopping and I said, okay, I'll come along. They have very nice stores, very well lit and they have this system where the, the showering of the water happens, you know, like on all the veggies and fruits. It looks so nice, so colorful. So they have these huge aisles of food. Meaning like watermelon, this size, big, huge watermelons. And there are like say 50 watermelons in a big basket. You pick any. You don't have to smell it. Like we check in Indian market. You know, it's from the smell we come to know it's sweet or not. Then we knock it with the knuckle whether it is ripe or not. Not a hassle over there. Pick any with your closed eyes. Cut it, it will be sweet. Why? It's genetically modified. So you have um, potatoes which are size of melons. And you have melons which are jumbo melons. I have never seen those big. I saw potatoes which were this big. And I saw the sweet potato which was this thick and this long. I, I don't know why they want to enlarge size of everything. Everything. I said, do we, do we have an organic food area? Okay, there was in one corner there was this. And that is at least three times expensive. So most of the people will skip buying from the organic section. I said, no, we'll go there. I needed sesame oil. And they had this whole line of these very beautiful bottles. So I picked one, we opened it up at home, and I smelt it, and it was all burnt oil. Now why it is giving the burnt smell? Because they had roasted the sesame seeds at a very high temperature to have more yield. So they had burnt those almost sesame seeds, and then uh, made oil out of that and I said this is pathetic I'm not going to use this because the label said cold pressed oil and the smell is of a burnt sesame seed oil so the markets are really bad so what you eat becomes very important. And I'm, I'm saying this now to everybody. Maybe grow your own vegetables. That's the only way. In pots you can grow almost everything. At least you will be not sorry because you will be safe. 
So eating right food becomes important. So I am for all home cooked food. Even if you wish to eat nuts, eat those nuts, I hope so, which are surely organic. And at uh, medium heat with some sea salt or senda namak, you know, you just roast it and you just eat it. No wonder tumors are growing everywhere in people. Cancers are happening so much. Liver fibrosis, cirrhosis is happening so much. Um, diabetic patients are at an epidemic number in India, I can say. This problem is huge. So you really have to be wise of whatever you put in your mouth is going to become part of your body. So, Clean food and non-labeled food. Don't go for labels. I was joking on this Ram Nomi when I was being asked, uh, Prasad mein kya banega? Mangayen kya bajar se? Mahana kuch bajar se nahi aayega. You better make it over here. So they, they hired special uh, cooks who can make gulab jamun over here. So for, you know, at least I think so, 2,500, maybe 3,000 gulab jamuns were made here, right? Because I don't want people getting sick. Uh, let me say, when you fry once, even in desi ghee, and then you use the same ghee to fry second time, and third time, and fourth time, this oil has become carcinogenic. So just fry once and then maybe use that oil for maybe one time more for making like a, a chalk for uh, vegetables. Never third time, no second time frying also. And then whatever oil is or ghee is left, use it for massaging your body because haldi, curcumin, salt, all these um, cumin and coriander, all these herbs which went in that food when you were frying that, they have partly gone into the oil and all these herbs and spices have made that oil herb oil. So, rub it on your body, you will get more benefit. See, it's very important that we keep our body healthy. Because only with a healthy body you can do sadhana. Because if your body gets sick, you can't do anything then. So, unfortunately, times are very hard. So we all have to be very conscious about what we are going to put in our mouth. And create this habit to read the label. What is the label? That day I just read the label of one chocolate, um, particular uh, chocolate bar and just let's go through what it is. <laughs> Palm oil was there. There was this chocolatey syrup, very famous, I can't take names. Sorry, <laughs> you'll have to find out yourself. Very big company, very, very well marketed. But they use palm oil in their spreads, in their sauces, the chocolate sauces. And you are going to make a milkshake out of that chocolatey syrup. You are giving poison to your own children. How wise can that be? 